Ah, there's just nothing like watching an old movie. The acting was top-notch. There were many films and genres that aren't as popular anymore, like classic westerns and musicals, and the black and white style somehow adds to the experience. It's the perfect way to spend a lazy evening at home. There's just one thing that keeps bugging you. Why does everyone in these old movies talk so weird? No matter how many old movies you watch, in all sorts of genres you notice the same thing. You can't put your finger on it, but there's a very distinct style of speaking that you don't notice anywhere else, and you certainly don't see it in today's movies or TV, or in everyday life. The only other time you can remember hearing it is when you were over at your grandfather's house as a child. He liked to listen to the radio, no need for that newfangled television box, and the old radio drama repeats he listened to sometimes had that same odd accent. It went away at some point, but what was it, and where did it go? You can't put your finger on it, but you notice certain repeated patterns when the actors in those old films speak. They seem to drop the R's in their words, so words like winner come out as winna. On the other hand, the T's in words seem to be strongly emphasized. The vowels seem a bit softer than when you usually hear people speak, so common words come out just a little bit different. It reminds you of a British accent in places, but it's not, because you've watched plenty of British films and those sound different. How widespread was the accent in the era and where did it start? The answer can be found in the golden age of Hollywood, where movies went from being a small experimental industry to one of the most powerful forces in entertainment. From the 1890s to the 1920s, film was largely the province of those interested in visuals. The earliest films mostly centered around one stunning visual, like a rocket to the moon or a train racing right at the screen. They got longer and added complex stories, but they were still silent films where you read the dialogue on the screen as a separate soundtrack played. Then came the talkies, and everything changed. As classic films moved into the era of spoken dialogue, some of the most famous films of all time were made. The Wizard of Oz, Casablanca, Citizen Kane, It's a Wonderful Life. Just saying their name brings to mind some of the most distinct dialogue from them. It's impossible to imagine these films without hearing There's No Place Like Home or Rosebud in your head. And with these iconic films came that distinctive accent spoken by some of the most famous names in Hollywood. But actors are different, and Orson Welles and Judy Garland certainly didn't have the same background, so how do they pick up the same accent? Most accents come from a distinct location, either a different country or a specific location within one. Those who live down south know that a Texas southern accent and a Louisiana southern accent aren't the same things. But this accent doesn't seem tied to any specific location, and it's spoken by actors from all around the country and the world in this old film. And that's because it's an accent designed to bridge the gap between the two cultures that influenced the golden age of Hollywood the most. Meet the Mid-Atlantic accent. Wait, how does that make any sense? No one lives in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean unless we're talking about the unique accent spoken by whales. And that's because this isn't a traditional accent reflecting a shared heritage. Rather, it's an accent designed to bridge the gap between an American accent and a British one. This might be the only accent in history that no one spoke unless they were taught to do so. It became popular in the first half of the 20th century as preparatory schools around the country taught their students to speak in a specific style to appear cultured. The students were given formal public speaking training that included a song-like intonation and longer vowels, which combined to a greater resonance. This meant that sometimes words lost the sound of some of the consonants, especially R. That didn't seem to stop the accent from becoming more and more popular among the elites. So when did this accent start making its way into the world of acting? Well, by the mid-1920s, the Mid-Atlantic accent was a staple of the wealthy and educated, particularly in the northeastern United States. President of the United States Franklin Delano Roosevelt and his wife were the only first couple to speak in this fashion, but First Lady Jackie Kennedy would bring it back into fashion in the 60s. Prominent authors and journalists were associated with it, with the majority being educated at private schools in New England. The boarding school Groton was considered the epicenter of this trend, and as a generation of actors came out of elite schools, they brought it to Hollywood. And with them came a sea of change in the way actors spoke. Traditionally, actors in the United States trained in imitating upper-class British accents. That's because they were primarily training for stage plays, with the most popular including the classic dramas of William Shakespeare and the mysteries of Agatha Christie. These perennials were set firmly in the world of London's upper class or the royal courts of bygone eras. Then came the silent films, and that allowed actors with very different voices to find a place in the pictures. 
No one cared what Charlie Chaplin's voice sounded like when he was defined by his inventive pantomime routines. Then came a woman named Edith Warman Skinner. A famous vocal coach, she was a student of linguist William Tilly and the author of a famous book called Speak with Distinction. She had studied the mid-Atlantic accent herself and called it good American speech. Her book became a required reading in many theatrical training programs and soon aspiring actors were adopting this distinctive pronunciation. She believed it was the appropriate way to speak in what she described as classic and elevated texts. Goodbye British accent. She went on to teach at the Carnegie Institute of Technology and later at Juilliard, where countless of the world's most famous actors graduated, all sounding the same. But did the technology of early films and radio have anything to do with how odd these actors sound? It's a chicken and the egg question, but the earliest days of radio and talkies had a problem with fully replicating the full range of human speech. The human bass tones couldn't be conveyed fully, which led to voices sounding much more nasally and clipped. These are traits already found in the mid-Atlantic accent, so when you watch an old film or listen to a recorded program on the radio from the era, these traits might be magnified by the sound quality. So how did this northeastern speaking style make its way all across the country to Hollywood? And that's because the American movie industry didn't start out in Hollywood. California was still up and coming in the early 1900s, while New York and Philadelphia were industry powerhouses, so most of the actors initially came out of the Northeast before the studios packed up and headed off to Los Angeles in the 1910s. It wasn't until they shifted to the talkies that people ever heard an actor's voice off a live stage, and they were surprised to hear that they all talked the same way. If there was a legendary actor of the era, they probably had this accent. Katherine Hepburn, Betty Davis, Cary Grant, even horror master Vincent Price all spoke in this style. For a long time it seemed to be everywhere, and then it wasn't. Where did the mid-Atlantic accent go? Hollywood continued to encourage actors to learn this accent into the 40s, but then the focus of Hollywood started to shift. Sound improved and actors were better able to get across their natural bass. Directors started focusing on more authentic films, telling stories from around the world and having their actors learn authentic accents from those regions. No longer would a cowboy roaming the Texas border sound like he had just come from crew practice at a Boston boarding school. The decline started at the end of World War II and increased immigration to the United States and a more diverse population led to the more distinctive American accents that we all know today. The world was less defined by our connection to the United Kingdom, and an accent that bridged the gap wasn't necessary. So did the mid-Atlantic accent simply fade away? Well, yes and no. While it's not traditionally taught as a critical part of vocal training for all actors now, you can still learn it from many of the top vocal coaches and at prominent acting schools. That's because the golden age of Hollywood and the era that surrounds it are now a part of American history, and that means only one thing in Hollywood, it's time to make movies about that era. Hollywood prides itself on historical accuracy now like never before with a big push for accurate casting and directors often consulting with historians while making their films. They want everything to fit the time period, including the way actors speak. The accent stayed for certain characters even after it fell out of use in the 1950s and 1960s, mostly for characters who were supposed to be stuffy upper-crust New Englanders. Soon enough, the accent went from a sign of elites to a sign of comedy characters. Famous characters like Thurston and Lovey Howell from Gilligan's Island or the Crane Brothers from Frasier used the accent long after it was common. The most famous use of the accent though didn't come from the Earth at all, it was menacing galactic tyrant Darth Vader voiced by James Earl Jones. The Imperial Overlord spoke with a deep bass voice and a mid-Atlantic accent, and it obviously worked. Can you imagine the iconic I am your father line being delivered with a California accent? So where does the mid-Atlantic accent show up today? Mostly in movies taking place in the era where it was popular. Netflix's new film Mank about the creation of Citizen Kane recreates the era faithfully down to the speaking tone of the actors and executives involved. When director Paul Thomas Anderson was making The Master, a 2012 film starring Joaquin Phoenix, Amy Adams and the late Philip Seymour Hoffman, the notoriously detail-obsessed director wanted to immerse his viewers in the era. The late 1940s era story, set among a New England religious cult, is considered the most accurate recreation of the mid-Atlantic accent era by film critic Richard Brody. Everyone comes off a little stiff and speaks in a specific cadence, exactly as they would have back then. So while the mid-Atlantic accent might be a thing of the past, and today's actors don't have that distinctive speaking style, the art of that style will continue to be taught. Hollywood loves movies about movies. 
For more on the complexities of the language, check out This is the Most Difficult Language in the World. And for more on the strange history of Hollywood, check out the most surprising historical celebrity deaths.